Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca and I am a stay at home mom and an online reseller. But this video is not a reselling video. This is a pregnancy update video. And I wasn't quite sure how many or how often um, I was going to make these like pregnancy update videos. So I'm just kind of making them when I feel like I have enough to update about. <laughs> this is going to be my, I guess, 16 week update. I'll actually be 16 weeks tomorrow. So this is mostly covering weeks 14 and 15. Um, and my last video, I think I was like in my 13-ish week. So kind of covered that then. But you can go check that video out if you wanna hear like more of my pregnancy announcement and all of that information. If you are new to this channel, then I have two kids. I have a four and a half year old and a two year old. And this is going to be my third baby. It is technically my fourth pregnancy because we had a chemical miscarriage um, back in February, but I kind of don't really count that a whole lot because it was like so quick and early. It's within like a couple days of finding out I was pregnant. So this is basically just, um, I consider it more of like my third pregnancy. So I wrote some notes down in my phone over the last like two weeks just so I could have stuff to report back about. And since I record on my phone, um, I have a nice little post-it note with all of the stuff written down so I wouldn't forget. I feel like even though this is my third time going through this, I do forget like what happened and when it happened because I didn't really keep any records. I tried to do like a pregnancy journal my first pregnancy and I was just like, I'm not the journaling type. So I never really kept up with it. Um, and I didn't have a YouTube channel for those other two pregnancies. So I don't really have any records, just kind of off the top of my mind, what I remember, but I wrote some things down. So hopefully this helps some of you out there who maybe are wondering if your symptoms are like normal <laughs> or just looking to commiserate with some people. So I'm gonna start with the symptoms and then kind of just like a little mini life update. If you do find that you are enjoying this video at any point, I would love for you to hit the like button and subscribe. I do both reselling videos and mom life videos on this channel because that is pretty much how my life is split between mom life and reselling. So I would love to have you um, join if you are interested in either of those things or both of those things. Please feel free to hit that button and come back for more videos. Okay, so let's start back at my 14 weeks and how my symptoms were basically then. So one of the biggest symptoms, and I'm still experiencing it now, a lot of these symptoms have been lasting the full two weeks or whatever. Um, one of the big symptoms is that I have been having a metallic taste in my mouth. It's really nasty. Um, and to be honest, I never got this with either of my other pregnancies. So this was a new one for me. And I do have a boy and a girl, so it's not like, you know, I can try to like guess the gender. We still don't know the gender at this point. Um, but I can't really like guess the gender based off of a new symptom. And from everything I've looked up, it's just all about the hormones. That's what's causing it. You know, pretty much every symptom is because of hormones. <laughs> so uh, they did say you can like have something sour, maybe eat or drink something a little more sour and that should help. And it does help like in the moment, but for me it doesn't last. So like the metallic taste lasts, but the relief doesn't. <laughs> So I've had a couple days in the 14 weeks, like two or three days in a row where it was really bad and actually was making me quite nauseous, just didn't feel well. I still have it even now sitting here talking, so it's really gross, but hoping it just passes soon. It kind of comes and goes right now. It's not as steadfast as it was early in 14 weeks. The other like big overarching symptom I feel like, it kind of encompasses a lot of different things, is just everything is really dry. <laughs> So, um, or I feel very dehydrated. So my skin feels very dry, especially like right around here. It's, I don't know why around my mouth, I guess, cause I don't have much oil there, but my skin gets very dry there. And um, I've just been super, super thirsty. I actually have, I can pretty much keep a water bottle like this with me all the time with like ice and water in it. I don't know the brand, T-A-L, Tao, I don't know. It's from Walmart. Um, I've had this bottle maybe for like a year and I really like it. And I actually bought another one that's exactly the same, just a different color because I like it. It keeps my drinks really cold. But I, I mean, I'm drinking at least two of these a day. I'm not sure how much these are. I think it's like 32 ounces maybe or close to that. Um, but I'm drinking at least two of those a day. That doesn't include anything else I'm drinking. And then 
I have to keep it like on my nightstand overnight because in the middle of the night, I'll get really thirsty. So uh, thirst is just a major symptom. And with the thirst, I'm also getting really bad headaches. So dry skin, headaches, thirst, it's all like kind of dehydration symptoms. Um, I have a headache really bad right now. <laughs> I have had it for a few days. Once again, it kind of gets better and worse at certain points. And it's like, I cannot drink enough water to make it go away. I know you can take Tylenol, but I am not, I don't usually take medicine that much, even when I'm not pregnant, but when I'm pregnant, I really try not to take anything, just a personal preference. Um, but yeah, so just super thirsty. I think that's another reason I've been craving, like I've never had, um, like a specific food craving in any of my pregnancies, but right now I've really been enjoying like crisp, cold fruit, like watermelon, cantaloupe, um, I don't know, grapes, anything like that. Like when it's really cold and I think I like getting the hydration part out of it too, which is all good because it's all good for you. But it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess I'm kind of craving that. It just, I feel like I need to keep drinking. Like I cannot drink enough. So to try to help with that um, dehydration feeling a little bit, I've heard a lot of people talk about liquid IV and I did get some liquid IV packets to try and I hear people rave about how they love these. And I have to say, I am just not on the bandwagon. I think they're pretty bad. Um, I don't know if like, I'm the only one who feels that way. So let me know below if you also tried them and you're like, I don't know what the big deal is with these. Cause I feel like the hardest thing for me is that it's like the texture over the taste. Um, but it's like almost like slimy. It's like thick syrupy kind of like texture. I don't know. So I usually only use like half of a packet in the amount of water it calls for for the entire packet. And even then it's still kind of strong. Like it's almost like if you've just taken like concentrate of like Kool-Aid, but you don't dilute it or <laughs> anything. That's the feeling I get from it. Um, so I do actually add in, I have like little packets from True Lemon that is like, I guess it's like dehydrated lemon. I use it just to make lemon water sometimes instead of keeping fresh lemons on hand. Um, and I add that in and that makes it like tolerable. So I have been using that and I do feel like it helps a little bit, um, but I will not be repurchasing. <laughs> I'm doing that just to get through what I have, but I will not be buying um, another one. I think I have the strawberry flavor, which I like strawberry stuff. And it's not the flavor that's wrong or whatever. It's just like, the texture is so, like I said, it just feels thick and um, like really, really concentrated. Like I can't dilute it enough. <laughs> so I don't know, that's just my opinion on that. But that's pretty much all the symptoms I really had starting at 14 weeks. 14 weeks was a decent week. Uh, nothing terrible really happened. Just started having some of those symptoms. And for the most part, all those symptoms are still persisting through week 15. So I guess the other symptom in week 15 that really was added is that I actually have more energy, um, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> it's definitely more than I had in like first trimester. Um, and of course I'm not like nauseous all the time, so that helps, but I have enough energy to make it through my day. <laughs> so like I said, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have two little kids, so they're pretty tiring as it is. Nap time is really like my solace at this point, which doesn't even always happen anymore, which I'll get into a little bit. But yeah, I've just been feeling a lot more or a lot better. I know I can pretty much make it till at least lunchtime. So I'm trying to get all of my tasks done in the morning. That way, like sometimes I can relax during nap time and then I feel like I have energy to get stuff done again. And then sometimes I'm just like dead to the world the rest of the night. <laughs> um, but I mean, being a mom, you know, and a wife at home is like, well, you still kind of have to do laundry, make dinner. Like you still got to power through most of that stuff. So it's some of those nights I just, when my husband gets off work, I just have to tell him like, you're going to have to take the kids tonight because I'm just exhausted. Um, and he's been pretty good about helping out with that, which is nice. I mean, he hangs out with the kids anyway, but some nights I really need him to like do pretty much everything. <laughs> and he's been really good with that. So the other nice thing about having some energy back and feeling a little bit better is I've started being able to work out again. And I think I had mentioned in my first video that I really didn't have like a workout plan, <laughs> which I still don't really, but I do know that I want to keep moving um, and as much as I can 
just to help myself feel better because I know the bigger you get and the further you get into pregnancy, the more aches and pains you're gonna have. So I have started um, walking, like we have an elliptical. We don't have anywhere outside to really walk unless we drive to a park or something. But uh, right now I've just been using the elliptical that we have. We kind of have it in a breezeway area. So I can let my kids play on our screened in porch and they can play with like water or something. And I just set like um, 30 minutes is what I've been doing on the elliptical. And I'm just taking a nice slow pace. It's like three miles an hour. I make it like a mile and a half. I am not trying to like crazy raise my heart rate or break a sweat even, whatever. I'm just trying to like get my body moving, make sure my hips and my knees and all that stuff. It makes me feel really old saying that, but just trying to keep my body moving and, um, you know, stay limber, I guess is the best way, you know, stay a little bit active. Um, I'm not worried about like trying to prevent weight gain or anything like that. So just trying to stay active a little bit with walking, even if it's on an elliptical. Um, I've been trying to do that a couple days a week. I did it, I think three days last week. So I'm going to kind of shoot for like every other day. If I do it every single day, that's a little much and it's making me a little bit sore right now because I am just starting off. So we'll have to see. Along with doing the elliptical to try to work out, I've also added, since it's summertime now, my son's out of preschool for the summer, I kind of added like a little list of like four or five things for them to do every day. And some of it's to help me. One of the things I added is stretching. Um, now my toddler does it sometimes, my four-year-old rarely does it, but I'm hoping throughout the summer they'll eventually do it. I think it's good for them too. Obviously it's good for everybody just to stretch but I really need to stretch. So sometimes I put on like a kid's yoga stretching video just to keep it more entertaining for them. But once again, it's just that like, you get all those like sore pains and stuff and you get tight and you just wanna, you just wanna stretch. It just feels good to stretch. So I've been trying to add that in most days as well. Along with being really thirsty and drinking all the time, of course comes um, going to the bathroom all the time. And that includes in the middle of the night. Right now it's not terrible. Sometimes I can make it through the night without going at all. Usually I'm getting up like one time each night, which isn't that bad. I know uh, going forward it'll get worse and there'll be like three or four times a night sometimes. Um, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm thirsty, it's usually when I go to the bathroom, I come back and I'm thirsty. I try to just take sips of water so I'm not drinking a ton because I'm also still trying to sleep <laughs> and sleep is limited sometimes. Another symptom that hasn't really developed just now, but I've at least been noticing it more now, is melasma. If you're not familiar with what melasma is, it's like a browning of the skin, at least in like fair skinned people. So you can't really tell because I'm wearing makeup, I feel like, but I'm, I'm kind of a freckly person anyway because I'm pretty fair skinned. But you get like, <laughs> I don't know, I can't really describe it, like brownish skin. I see it mostly up on my forehead. And um, it's almost like really big freckles. I don't really know, but it happens in pregnancy. It's a hormone thing. It happens, I think, more when you're out in the sun, you can see it more, but um, I think it's just your body pr uh, producing more melanin. So it's more visible when you go in the sun. And I definitely got this back in my first pregnancy and I don't think it's really gone away like in between pregnancies. I don't know if I should really expect it to ever go away. To me, it doesn't really bother me too much. It's not a big deal. It kind of goes on par with like my complexion as it is. So yeah, that's just something I've been noticing at least more this week. Maybe I was just looking at it more. I don't know. I'm definitely more hungry. I'm definitely eating like four meals a day. I usually eat my breakfast, my lunch, and then at that time I usually have like um, a bagel and some fruit or I, I eat something else, something more substantial than just a small snack. And then I eat dinner or if I don't get that afternoon snack in, sometimes even when I do, I will have like a bowl of cereal before I go to bed, which is usually just like Cheerios and sometimes I'll cut a banana. I'm trying to keep my meals healthy because I know I'm eating a lot. Um, and I'm really not craving like a bunch of junk food anyway. So it's kind of working out for me. I have no idea how much like weight I've gained in the last month, really. <laughs> I'm not weighing myself this pregnancy. Um, I don't feel like I'm gaining like a ton or really fast. I never have with the other ones, um, but I'm just gonna let the doctor's office tell me whatever they're seeing. 
at each appointment because I'm not really worried about it if I gain too much. You know, it's it's whatever and I'll work it off later after the baby comes, but um, I pretty much, I think I usually gain around like that 25 to 30 pounds, so I'm really not too worried about it. This one isn't really a symptom per se, but uh, maternity clothes. So to be honest, like I said, being my third pregnancy, I started wearing maternity clothes like the day I got my positive test. I was like, I'm bloated, I don't feel good, I'm wearing stretchy clothes and maternity clothes are the best for that. Um, they just, they easily like, I don't know, like I like the big, the full belly bands and they just, I flip them down when I don't need the full band up and it's comfortable for me even like early on. I don't try to stay squeezed into anything. <laughs> it's not comfortable. I don't enjoy it, especially when you're feeling nauseous in the beginning. So I'm definitely in maternity clothes, um, definitely bottoms. I have like less than a handful of non-maternity bottoms that'll still fit me and we're talking like stretchy athletic shorts um pretty much everything else i'm in is maternity and i was dumb and got rid of like all my summer maternity clothes last year because i didn't think i was gonna be pregnant in the summer again so i've had to rebuy maternity clothes most stuff i try to get second hand um i thrift anyway obviously so i do try to get myself second hand but it's honestly been quite difficult um, not sure where all the medium sized pregnant women take their clothes, but it's not to my thrift stores. <laughs> I've been finding stuff in like extra small, small, large, extra large. And I'm like, where's the mediums? So, um, if you're looking for maternity clothes though, and you're not looking to spend a lot of money, cause like this is my last pregnancy and I don't like to spend a lot of money anyway. I found that the best place for me was to go to Ross and Ross dress for less, I guess is the name of the store. But they're like the only place besides like Target in my town that has maternity clothes and Walmart that has maternity clothes in store and they're the best price that I've found. Now they aren't like crazy high quality, but they are good enough in my opinion. Um, so I went and I bought two pairs of jean shorts, maternity shorts of course, um, and a pair of maternity bike shorts. Uh, just like athletic shorts, they're still maternity, so they have like a super high rise to go over your belly, but they're so comfortable. They've got pockets, which is great. And um, I think I just bought like a nursing bra from there as well. It was like on sale for like $3. I think the shorts were like, the jean shorts were like $7 and the um, more athletic shorts were like four or five bucks. So that's like thrift store prices, maybe even a little bit better than some of the thrift store prices. So right now I'm set. I've got like three pairs of jean shorts because um, I had found one at a thrift store a couple months ago. And I'm still gonna be searching maybe for a few things, but for the most part, I've got some t-shirts and a lot of my non-maternity t-shirts still fit me for now. They're not too tight yet. So I can still wear those. Um, and it's not like 90 degrees right now. We're in the 70s and my house stays pretty cool. Like I'm in a cardigan right now. <laughs> So um, I can still get away with wearing leggings most days, um, but it's definitely gonna get warmer out and I'll have to wear more of those shorts soon, but definitely in maternity clothes. Um, I always wear like, I guess they call them maternity bras. They're, they're nursing bras. Obviously I don't need to nurse right now, but that's what they are. They have the little clip downs um, just because none of my regular bras fit at this point. They never do <laughs> last very long once I get pregnant. So, um, yeah, I'm just in all of those and they're more comfortable that way. And then I can use them after the baby comes if I need to as well. So here comes the one like not so fun part that I've been dealing with. And this is like really not common for me, but I've been dealing with like a fair amount of anxiety about this pregnancy. And I know that part of it comes from the loss we had in February. And I think a big part of it also comes from, um, I had a family member who lost a baby like two years ago and she was somewhere in her teens for her, um, how many weeks pregnant she was. It was like somewhere between, I think like 15 and 20. Um, so I've been feeling like a lot of anxiety about that. It's hard because you're not feeling like super consistent movements from a baby at this point, even though I still have felt movement, it's not super consistent and it's just hard to know like if everything's going okay in there 
you just try to hope like, okay, I'm still having symptoms and there's nothing like crazy that's happened. So I'm hoping that like, that is making me feel, you know, nothing bad's happened. I guess no news is good news. <laughs> I don't know, but I've definitely been feeling anxious about it. Um, I'm not gonna like get a Doppler or anything. I think that would just add to my anxiety to be honest. So it just kind of in this waiting game because you have like a month in between appointments and just being like, I hope things are going okay in there. I have no idea. And it's definitely keeping me from like fully enjoying this pregnancy. I do have my next appointment next week. So I'm like a week and a half um, away from my next appointment, which makes me feel like, okay, well, once I have that appointment, I'll feel a little bit better. Um, and I hope I feel that way, but I don't know why. I just, it's making me kind of sad because I'm like, this is my last pregnancy. And I really wanted it to be like a happy experience, but I'm just having trouble getting past that anxiety of like something could be wrong and I wouldn't know it. Um, but shortly after we have my appointment next week in like two weeks after that, then we'll have an ultrasound. So I won't have to wait an entire month. And I feel like once you get to that 20 weeks, like I should be feeling movement more consistently by then. And um, I feel like I'll be like, okay, we made it halfway and I'll feel better. So <laughs> I've never had any issues with my other pregnancies. I don't know. I feel like I had the Superman complex before of like, you know, oh, nothing really ever happens. I'm young, I'm healthy. Why would something bad happen? Which obviously isn't how life works, <laughs> but as that Superman complex. So I've been dealing with that, but um, I still think things are going fine. It's just hard for me to like, completely separate from those negative thoughts but also I feel like honestly with kids I'm just so busy already like I don't think about it 24 7 I'm just like trying to get through and like keep doing what I'm doing but I'm definitely not like as super excited as I was hoping I would be during this pregnancy that's most of the symptoms I have been experiencing in the last two weeks there's also been you know just regular like, growing pains and nothing significant but things hurt things ache it's just kind of, you know, par for the course with pregnancy. But I figured I'd give a little bit of a life update as well, just things that are going on that kind of are because of baby. <laughs> some of it, some of it not so much, but there's like three main things, I guess, or four, three and a half, um, things that have been happening. So the one thing that's happened is we got that minivan ordered. They originally said that, well, it's gonna be a Honda Odyssey, 2023 Honda Odyssey. And um, they originally said it was gonna start production in July and then take six to 12 weeks to get to us, which would put us like a month before my due date, which makes me a little, like I really hope it comes sooner than that. But they recently have said that it should start production this month actually, so in June. So hopefully it'll get here sooner. <laughs> I'd love to get it as soon as possible uh, just to get used to it and everything um, well before a baby comes. So that's exciting. Of course, we're losing our money on it, but you know, that's kind of the way those things work. The other thing that has happened is we are currently in the throes of potty training with my toddler. She is two years old and she's doing really well so far. We got kind of planned for us to be home for like an entire week before we went anywhere. We are on day five, I think. Um, and she's doing pretty well. Um, better than I expected to be honest <laughs> but still not fully there but I would love to have only one kid fully in diapers um, by the time the baby gets here and she was just showing signs that seemed like she was ready so that's why we started doing that so that is a fun uh, little addition to our day of things we're doing and then the other big thing is if you guys are familiar with this room, I'm sure by the green walls, I tried to sit in front of the door so it wasn't like a full green screen behind me, but this is my son's room, or it was, we have completely emptied it out and it is going to be demoed, I guess, kind of soon. <laughs> so that means that we have moved him into his sister's room. So she's still in a crib at the moment and he is in a single bed Last night was the first night they spent <laughs> together. They're supposed to be down there having nap time right now, but I can hear them chatting a bit. Um, it took them like, I think it took him an hour and a half to fall asleep and her two hours. So it, it could have been better. Um, he woke up at like 2 a.m. and he had wet the bed, which isn't great. He's four and a half. 
he just in the last couple of weeks has been able to make it like every night dry. Um, but he just, he sleeps really deeply and he actually kind of unrelated, but he actually started riding a pedal bike yesterday. So he was on a balance bike, um, for the last like year or two. And he just got the hang of the pedal bike yesterday, which is super exciting. He's loving it, but I think it's really tiring him out. He's doing it like all the time outside. So I think he was really, really tired. And by the time he got to sleep, I think he just slept right through having to go to the bathroom. So he didn't get up or anything. So I did have to go in and change him. And then she was awake because he was crying because he had wet the bed and then she wanted a diaper change. So I changed her diaper and <laughs> it actually went okay. I wasn't super surprised that something like that happened. Um, and then they did end up going back to sleep. They each got a song and I rubbed their backs a little bit and then put them back to bed. They slept till around seven. So I'm really hoping they take naps right now, which it doesn't sound like they are, but I anticipate them being quite tired and they were quite cranky this morning, I think from being tired. But this is something that they're going to be doing is sharing a room now. So they're down in her room right now, which is smaller, which is gonna be the nursery. That's been the nursery for every kid, um, except my son wasn't born in this house, but when we moved here, that was his room initially. And then the room I'm in up here is actually bigger. So we will be moving the two big kids up here, but we are going to be redoing the room. Um, like it's not gonna be green anymore. It was green when we moved here. We did not paint it green. I never liked the green. We just never got around to painting it. <laughs> so it's gonna finally get repainted. That's pretty much my update, I think. I still have to do a belly shot. I know I'll show you guys um, the bump, but I think as far as like things that have been going on and symptoms and everything, I think that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions, if I'm missing anything. I don't think I'm missing anything major, but uh, let me know how your symptoms have been also. And I'm gonna back the camera up here so you can see my belly. So I'm on my knees right now, but this is my, basically my 16 week belly. This is uh, afternoon after lunch. I feel like it's even bigger before I go to bed but it's um <laughs> i feel like it's quite large for 16 weeks but it is my third baby so i will be taking a new bump shot probably tonight or tomorrow and then um i always like on my facebook just personally i post i will probably post it over my instagram too so if you follow me over on instagram i'm at the cozy shire and you can follow me over there i probably will put it in my stories um just a comparison of each pregnancy. I just feel like this one sticks out a lot more. And I feel like when I look at my other pregnancies, the stomach stayed in a lot closer, especially my first one. Um, my second baby, I actually feel like she protruded out a lot. But um, my first one, maybe it was just because I never had a baby. I felt like my stomach stayed in quite tight for a while. But I feel like I popped like a month ago. <laughs> so I don't know, definitely feels big to me. It doesn't bother me. I know there's only one baby in there. Um, I'm not really concerned about it, but I plan on making some more pregnancy videos coming up. I want to do one that is like things that I'm doing differently with my third baby. Let me know if you're interested in a video like that. And I was thinking of also doing my birth story for my second child. I already did the one for my first son or my first child. So you can go watch that if you're interested. My second one was completely different than my first one. And I figured I should do her birth story before I have a third birth story to talk about. Um, and the other thing I completely forgot. So gender reveal. I will be finding out the gender. Well, we'll be going to our gender ultrasound. I think, well, it's going to be at the end of this month, end of June. And we're going to take our son, our oldest. I think he's going to really love to see it. I think it'll be fun. I think our daughter is just too young to really get it. And it's a pretty long appointment sometimes, but... My husband has decided he doesn't want to find out the gender until our gender reveal party. We're basically just having like a barbecue or baby queue with some friends and family. We just want to get everyone together and we'll do a gender reveal during that picnic or during that barbecue. We're not doing like a baby shower or anything like that. Um, but I'm like, I want to know. I need to know beforehand because I just need to feel like prepared. There may be gender disappointment. I don't know, but I just need to know before everybody else knows, but he wants to find out with everybody else. So it's kind of going to be interesting, kind of going to be fun. Um, I only have to keep it from him for like a week, a week and a half, 
I think before we actually had the barbecue after the gender reveal ultrasound or the gender ultrasound, what is it called? Anatomy ultrasound. <laughs> there you go. So, um, I'm really excited to find out the gender, but then I also have to like plan how we're going to kind of announce it. So that'll be fun too. Okay. I think that's all I have for this video though. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.